Our next speaker is Joe Rodriguez. Joe is a native Wichita, a graduate of Wichita North High, Go Red Hawks. <laughs> I'm going to get it, Joe. And Wichita State University, Go Shocks, where he received a BA in Journalism and Minority Studies. For the past 12 years, he has served as Director of Development at Holy Savior Catholic Church and Academy in Wichita. And he's a former reporter at the Wichita Eagle, where he worked for nearly 20 years. I got you beat, 36 years. Joe and I were in the newsroom when there was a really big newsroom, uh huh, and a whole bunch of reporters. That shows how old we are, Joe. He and his wife, Lisa, have three sons and two grandsons. So welcome, Joe, my old friend. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. As uh, my friend Bonnie said, it was a reporter at the Eagle for all those years. And on occasion, I would get out and speak to groups, speak to classrooms, speak to organizations. And there was one question that would inevitably come up in every time I made a presentation, and it was this. What was the hardest story you ever did? And having written, I would estimate, over 2,000 stories. And I would say, you know, there wasn't a hardest story that I can pinpoint, but there was a hardest type of story. And that was a story when I had to interview a parent about their deceased child. And we've heard some stories here already about that. And I, you know, it was difficult. I mean, what do you say to someone? What I learned is it didn't matter the circumstance, the age, the race, where they were from. The parents' emotion and grief was pretty similar. And as an example, I remember two occasions. I didn't even speak the language of the parents. I had a translator, but in truth, I didn't need it. I knew what they were saying. I knew what they were feeling. And unfortunately for my wife and I, we had this experience when our son, Zach, passed away four years ago this month, April 20th. Um, we are, we're heartbroken, and we still are heartbroken. And forgive me for my tears, because I do cry when I talk about it. But, uh, you know, I've lost a parent, my father. I've lost grandparents. I've lost close friends, cousins, aunts, and uncles. But no grief, nothing prepared me for losing a son, Zach. Um, I found my comfort in my faith, in my friends, in my family, in people who surrounded us with love and care. Um, I find comfort in going to Zach's grave every week, as I did on Sunday today. Every Sunday I go, I went this morning, and to see the ways that people still come out and remember him with, of course, flowers, but maybe on occasion, a, a bottle of Coke. You love Coke. Uh, candies, or most recently there was a beer out there on his grave, because <laughs> uh, he did like a beer every now and then too. So. <laughs> but for Zach, the d a decision that he made as a teenager uh, helped save the lives of four people. When he got his driver's license, he checked the box to become an organ donor. It's a decision he made primarily because of my sister, his aunt, who has, was in need of a kidney transplant. She was on a waiting list for many years, and Zach knew the importance of that. He knew what that meant, and so there was no decision for him. He did that, and when he passed, I remember uh, groups talking to us and asking Lisa and I if this was something that we wanted to, to do. There was no hesitation. We, of course, honored uh, his decision uh, to have him do that, and that decision saved the lives of four people, his organs, lungs, kidneys, liver, and amazingly, his heart. He had died of a heart condition after being in the hospital for a week. But his heart was also donated. One of the families that uh, he received, that received one of Zach's organs, his lungs, a North Dakota man, um, reached out to us. We were able to make contact with him. Wanted to visit with us, learn more about Zach, and he came down to Wichita from Fargo. Spent time here, got to know Lisa, I, our family, went out with us to visit Zach's grave. And we've become good friends. It's a way for us, a way to kind of cope with the grief to have this person who's so grateful for the gift of life that he received. He was near death, and now that man is climbing mountains, literally. He's made a point to go to the highest point in every state was his goal, to go out with his wife and daughter. And was made possible through Zach. We now honor Zach in a variety of ways. Uh, through his decision, the Midwest Transplant Network 
has asked Lisa and I to speak um, at events, news, radio inter interviews about organ donation, to share our story. We've done that. There was a slide. If you visit the DMV in Twin Lakes where Zach got his license, you'll see his story on a board poster board in there about his decision that he made there, hopefully encouraging others to make that same decision. If you go to Connie's Mexico Cafe, you'll see his picture up on the wall. You'll see his picture included in an uh, altar at the Dia de los Muertos event in November. And we are very honored to be invited to go out to the Rose Bowl Parade this year. Zach was one of 39 organ donors, heroes nationwide, whose image of fluorograph was done to be put on the Rose Bowl Parade float from the Midwest Transplant Network. And the award ended up, the float ended up winning the sweepstakes award for the best floats, and we were really proud of that. You know, when Zach passed away, it was Easter weekend of 2019. And as a person of faith, that sat with me for a while. Um, you know, on a weekend when we talk about death, life conquering death, and he passed. And it, it sat with me for a while. I didn't know the answer. And one year later, Easter weekend of 2020, my sister got the call. She was to go 